Hey, Carly. Good to meet you here. Um, that's, I know you are obsessed with bees and with really good honey. <laughs> and so, I, you know, I would love to, so today's, today's call, what, what I would love to achieve is hear your stories, what got you so passionate about honey. Um, I'd also love to give our, our audience, our viewers, a little bit of advice when you walk into, go to a farmer's market or go to a local mm -hmm. uh, store, uh, what kind of like how to select good honey what's good honey how do we know it's safe like there's also crap around us the bees we don't control where the bees are going how do we know what's a good honey so let's talk about all of that and and you guys have some really wonderful products that I fell in love with I'm going to talk a little bit about them um, especially right now with everybody's coming down with something you know um, I started using your throat spray propolis and it's just been awesome so I want to just talk about some of the incredible power, um, not just of honey, but a lot of people have heard about what royal jelly is or bee pollen is, but many of us don't really know what it is and what, what mm -hmm. can it help us with. So let's unpack all of that. Um, but I know you had a really kind of an interesting story of why, why you landed in, in, in love with honey in the first place. Yeah, so uh, I... A long tradition of farmers who like do... <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so I grew up in Toronto in the city. I didn't know anything about the bees. And I thought like many of us, that all the bees did was make honey. Um, and for me, my healing journey really began with propolis. So learning about the more unique products that the bees make from propolis to royal jelly to pollen. So my story began, I have an autoimmune condition and I can't take antibiotics. So mm -hmm. that was really challenging because I also had a chronically weak immune system. So I had chronic tonsillitis. I don't know if anyone in your audience has struggled with strep throat or tonsillitis or those sort of who viral has, issues, it, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it was brutal. So imagine having that, but being sick for like three weeks to a month at a time, because I didn't have anything that could cure me. I couldn't, I was very allergic and reactive to antibiotics and most over the counter products. And so I began starting to explore the natural world, but I had a really hard time because I would find all of these immune boosters and products that promised the world, but just didn't really deliver on results. So I wound up spending a lot of time sick and spending money I didn't have on expensive superfoods. And I was just kind of really frustrated. And that continued up until I was in college. And when I was in college, I did a semester abroad and I was studying in Europe. And it was in Italy that I was first introduced to bee products. So I had really severe tonsillitis. My face was super swollen. I was going to have to go home because I was having a hard time breathing. And I was just so upset because, you know, I'd spent my life kind of missing out on things from being sick. And I really worked hard waitressing and saving up to do that exchange abroad. And the last thing I wanted to do was cut it short. So I was looking for anything. I went into a pharmacy when I was in Florence and the pharmacist took one look at me and my swollen chipmunk cheeks. And she said, you need propolis. And I had no idea what propolis was. So I asked, what is it? And she said, it's from the bees. And I was like, oh, okay, so honey. And she's like, no, completely different propolis. So I didn't really know what she was talking about, but I was desperate and I bought this little bottle of it and I tried it. And in about five days, I made a full recovery. And that wow. was my first ever healing experience. I'd spent so much time being sick for weeks on end and trying things and having reactions and you name it. And this was the first time that I used something and I really healed. So that was my first introduction to propolis. And, and, and of, if I can just say here, just yeah. a shout out for pharmacists in Europe, you know, like how, how many pharmacists oh in the US are going to give you propolis for tonsils, right? They just No one. On, and a lot of antibiotics and a lot of other stuff in order to deal with it. So really kudos yeah. to her and kudos to just generally in, you know, in Europe. I mean, Europe is such a different place altogether from North totally, America. Totally, totally different place. There's such yeah. an awareness of natural health there. They're so progressive. And so it was interesting. So after, so I, I bought this propolis, I made a full recovery and I continued using it even after I got better because I was so scared of getting sick again. So I, I would just chronically get sick. And so I was using it every day. And as I was traveling around Europe, I started to see propolis everywhere and I would see royal jelly in different places. I remember being in France and seeing these hormonal balance supplements and brain supplements and anti-aging things with royal jelly. And then in Copenhagen, seeing bee pollen on smoothies and it was, I just started incorporating all these things into my routine and I was healthier than ever. And so I had finally found something that worked for me. I was not at all thinking of starting a business. I was just really looking as a sick person to heal. And I found the answer in bee products. And in Europe, this stuff is so commonplace. And then I came back to North America to finish up my university. And I got sick, of course, because stress and exams and all of that does that to you. 
And when I got sick, I was like, it's okay. I know what I need. I just need some propolis. And I went to every health food store. Nobody knew what I was talking about. I didn't even try to go to a mainstream pharmacy because in North America, just no idea. Um, and I finally found propolis at a farmer's market and it was very expensive. It was $40. It was like a tiny bottle of organic propolis. And I used it and I had a really severe allergic reaction. And yeah, and at the time, this is the gift of being in university when you discover these things. I was a TA for my chemistry class. I was taking a lot of chemistry courses. And so I actually ran a toxicity panel on the product I had purchased and I figured out there was pesticides in it. Whoa. And even though it was labeled organic. So that was my first time I started to really, I was like, how is this possible? So I started exploring regulations and just the reality of bees. And like you mentioned at the start of this, the bees fly different places. So just because they're on organic land, if the neighbors are doing something dirty or, you know, they fly out a bit, they can still get exposure to those pesticides. Yeah. And for some people, maybe they wouldn't have reacted. But for me being autoimmune, I reacted heavily. And so I was really upset. I was like, I know what I need, but I can't get it in the quality that I need it. And I'm sick right now and I'm desperate. And so I was like, you know what? I have to take matters into my own hands. I have to just beekeep myself and run quality control on the stuff I'm making. So I started beekeeping and it was the best thing I ever did because I completely fell in love with it. It started really for me just pursuing a product. So, then so, as wait, I started, so you were in Toronto then when you started beekeeping? No, I, I was in British Columbia. So I went to school on the West Coast. Okay. So it was a much, it was, I mean, we do keep bees in Ontario, but it was a really great environment. And I actually started beekeeping on Vancouver Island. So I was like in the middle oh, of the forest, no, no pesticides around. Yeah. It was, it was the perfect environment. And I found an incredible mentor. He um, was a third generation beekeeper from Romania. And in Romania, it's, it's very much a generational trade. And there's just, they're just so brilliant, the beekeepers from Romania that I've met with. Yeah. So I learned everything from him and I started learning about the bees and the impact they have in the environment and just, you know, all of the different health benefits of these different products they make and how you can incorporate it, them into your routine. And I start like I had psoriasis, it started to go away. Um, I had more energy. I stopped getting sick. My, my whole life changed. Wow. And I also just really fell in love with this practice of beekeeping and at the same time, I was doing tons of research on the efficacy and medical effects of these different products. And I found that there's actually a lot of research out there on propolis, on, on royal jelly, um, these not like new drugs. These are things that we were using long before the advent of antibiotics. Like the first recorded human use of propolis dates back to 300 BC. So this is the the stuff that we were originally really using to heal coming from yeah. the earth. So it's awesome. So, I mean, what a story and, uh, and especially going from like something that healed you to actually having your own bees as you know, and I've always wanted to actually, I've been looking into being a beekeeper too. Problem is I live up in the mountains in Rocky, in the Rockies and we have, you know, it's, it's just the bear will just decimate it. And you can put all sorts of cages around it and stuff, but I also don't want to lure you know, the, the bear mm -hmm. and kind of tease them. And so it's not a practice we, we have here unless you want a lower elevation. So, um, but anyway, I, it's, you know, and, and also coming from Eastern European background, honey is something that is used uh, mm -hmm. extensively um, as a hugely therapeutic, in fact, a, a method deliver, of delivery. And in fact, you know, as an herbalist, I also, I'm just like completely obsessed with honey right now. After this call, I'm gonna be doing um, honey infusions uh, just a short Ooh, demo amazing. on that on, on Facebook. So, so tell, tell us, um, you know, first of all, cause we've been throwing these terms around. So let's just get some clarity and education here on the, um, what is honey? And then where does that come from? And then Royal jelly. And then let's talk about propolis that you mentioned. Awesome. I love this question. Cause there is no, like people don't know. So I'll start with honey, the most familiar one. And I'll, I'll start with what the bees use it for. And then the medicinal effects for humans. So for the bees, the honey you can think of as their carbs or their energy source. And what it comes from is floral nectars. So bees have these long tube-like tongues and they'll go flower to flower sucking up these floral nectars. They carry it back to the hive in their honey stomach and then they put it into the combs. They fan out the moisture and they let it ferment a bit and it becomes the honey that we know. And so it's, it's literally their food source. And for humans, it's really high in antioxidants. It's very high in enzymes. It's actually the only food on the planet that never goes bad. That's why, I mean, you know this as a practitioner, but yeah. honey is so fantastic to pair with whatever you're taking because it helps with absorption because it's just got those amazing enzymes. Uh, and then it's got, um, it's really great for actually relaxing the body. When you take honey, it allows for a slow, steady spike in insulin. 
that allows the tryptophan in your body to cross the blood brain barrier where it's converted into serotonin and melatonin. So it's actually a wonderful sleep aid. So a lot of fantastic benefits. It does have trace amount if it's raw and good quality as trace amounts of propolis and all of the other superfoods as well. And so it has immune boosting powers and antiviral activity. So that's honey. It's also just delicious. Um, and then propolis, my favorite one, which I, I had to delay our recording to run downstairs and get this and spray before we started. Um, so prop, so honey, you can think of as the bee's carbs and energy source. Propolis, you can think of as the bee's medicine. So propolis is literally the building blocks of the bee's immune system. While honey's coming from flowers, propolis is coming from plant and tree resins. So think of things like sap. It's literally the protective parts of the, of the trees and the plants. And um, then the bees will collect that, put it through their enzymatic process, and they use propolis to line the entire hive to keep it germ-free. So they line the walls to ensure that no pathogens get into the hive. And even for newborn baby bees, they line the cell walls to create a sterile environment for newborns. And one really interesting fact about propolis, let's say a predator gets into the hive like a mouse, the bees can sting it and kill it, but they can't physically carry a dead mouse out of the hive. And just like us, if we had a decaying body in our living room, we would get very, very sick. If the decaying rodent was just kind of open in the hive, it would kill all the bees. So what the bees do is they mummify it in propolis and it's that powerful of an antiviral, antimicrobial protective substance that it insulates all the bacteria and allows wow. the bees to just function. I had no idea. Yeah. So is it's, that what it's they were so using powerful. in Egypt for mummifying too? Yep, it is. It is. Yep. Oh, the ancient yeah. Egyptians across cultures, actually propolis was used. Um, the Incas used to drink propolis to reduce fever in ancient Greece. It was used. Um, ancient Egypt people used it actually in the 17th century. It was listed in the London Pharmacopedia as an official drug. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to say it's like the OG antibiotic. It's really what we were using before we started using this stuff. And and for me, that's really how I use it because it's antiviral, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and antibacterial. And it's a powerful so, anti-inflammatory. So yeah. we'll say, so first of all, um, you know, this is a shameless plug for the products because they're darn good. <laughs> and as you guys know, we feature only the best of our partners in uh, All Things We Love, the platform we've created. So I got this from you uh, like a month ago, and I've been having going through some, I don't know, challenging time with my like kind of health coming back, you know, just too much trouble and too little rest. And so mm -hmm. I started having, you know, how it starts off with a bit of a scratchy throat. And, and I thought, and I looked at it, it was like, all oh, there is propolis. And a lot of times you have a lot of other things in these sort of throat formulations, including, you know, all sorts of herbs and uh, sometimes homeopathic stuff. And all it has here is just propolis with, with a few other things like vegetable glycerin and water. And, um, and I remember thinking, they ain't gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just did, you know, just the spray tastes so good. And um, boom, two hours later, I was like, what happened to my soul throat? <laughs> yeah, no, it's super effective. And so that's a big, like if you're using pure high grade propolis, it's really all you need. And, and for us, I also, I really believe in short ingredient lists and just high potency, yeah. high quality that's why uh, and, we feature it, it all, is. That's why we feature in all things we love. Hey, you guys. So um, first of all, there's going to be a link somewhere near this video on where you can get it. And we got 15% off from Carly. And that's higher than, that's a special offer for, for only for Hormones Balance community, but other people don't get that. So, but it, it is going to expire on the 1st of November. So you have another week. Um, really great. And, and this is like something that doesn't really go bad, does it? No, so no, it's, it, it lasts quite a few years. Um, I, I mean, I go through my bottles quickly because I literally spray every day. So I use it to prevent getting sick yeah. and just boost my immune system generally. But I also do use it for inflammation. And it's really great, even for intestinal issues for things like colitis. Um, it's, it's really powerful for inflammation. We've even seen that it's been helpful for candida because it contains a compound called pinosembrin, which acts as a fungicide in the body. So propolis is just a great, it's like, for me, it's like my silver bullet when I'm traveling, when I'm on the plane, I have it like in the car, in the glove compartment. Yeah. And I just kind of am spraying all the time to help boost is my system. Is there anyone who is allergic to propolis? They should be mindful of this. So very small percentage of people actually are allergic to it. Occasionally people with very, very severe asthma can get triggered. So that's really the only people who stay away from it. If you have like a, a very severe allergy to bee stings or bee products, what I recommend is doing a patch test, spray a little bit on your skin and see if mm -hmm. it gets red or it reacts in any way. Okay. But generally people tolerate propolis very well. 
Okay, sounds great. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is really cool product. I've never seen anything like this. So this is for brain performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really love the capsules because it just comes in this really snazzy capsule. Um, I'm going to open it and, and just and, and have a shot. Do you want to just tell us what's in there? What's so special about it? And I love this product too. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with the bee product that's in there, which is royal jelly. So a little recap. So honey is the bee's carbs and energy. Propolis yeah. is the bee's medicine. Royal jelly is their superfood. So the royal jelly is the, it's the food of the queen bee. It's literally all the queen bee eats. And if you look at in nature, the queen bee lives three to five years versus a regular bee who lives six to eight weeks. Uh, the queen bee lays up to 1,500 babies a day. Regular female bees don't have reproductive organs. So in nature, it's doing something crazy. For humans, there's, you know, people have been using royal jelly for a very, very long time. A lot of people use it for hormonal stabilization for both men and women. It has fantastic balancing effects. And then in Western science, there's been a lot of studies recently focused on royal jelly and its effects on the brain. So royal jelly, it's really high in acetylcholine, which is the neurotransmitter responsible for brain-body connection. So you can think of it as helping to strengthen your messaging system. And it also contains these two fatty acids that are only naturally occurring in royal jelly. One is called AMPN1 oxide, and the other one is called 10-HDA. And they promote BDNF, or brain-derived nootropic factor, and they literally act as a catalyst for neurogenesis. So they help your brain to produce new, fresh, clean neurons. So it's really fantastic to take to help to improve your spatial reasoning, boost your memory, and just to help support your brain. We're exposed to so many carcinogens in our environment. We're so stressed. We're multitasking. Royal jelly is a fantastic thing to take to help support your brain. And for me as well, I had a really severe concussion about two months ago. And I took, I was doing two vials a day and my recovery was remarkably quick. So that was really great. Um, and then the other ingredients in that product, in addition to royal jelly, we yes. have Bacopa monnieri, which is an extract from a leaf traditionally used in Ayurvedic medicine. Yes. I know that you know it, you're nodding your head because yeah. you know herbalists know this one, but it mainstream people don't use it. But Bacopa is an amazing, and it's an adaptogen and it also strengthens memory and it's a neuroprotective agent. So it helps to protect the brain. And then the third ingredient is ginkgo biloba, which is an extract from a tree. It's great for reducing inflammation, helping to oxygenate and circulate the brain, um, and modulating our stress response. So again, with the three simple ingredients, where it's a high potency formula, so we're dealing in the three to 500 milligrams per active ingredient. And it's really a shot you can take on the go to help boost memory, focus, concentration, but without the caffeine, without any stimulants. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I'm big mm -hmm. on getting people off caffeine. And this is like one of our previous partners we featured it was on adaptogenic coffee, getting people off coffee, the regular coffee. So this is really awesome. Um, and I have to tell you, you know, when I was in herbal school, we had to, we had these exercises where for a week you have to be with an herb and I did Bacopa and mm -hmm. it took me about three days for it to really kick in. But once it did, I was just like, boom, so sharp. I loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good. Yeah. So you, that's why you guys call it a natural nootropic. And also we also yeah. getting 15% off on this, you guys. Really awesome offer until the 1st of November. And I also love the fact that the other ingredients, all you have is just vegetable glycerin and purified water. That's it. And you can taste the herbs in it as well, the bitterness of the herbs, which, you know, as an herbalist, I love that. But you still have that sweetness uh, from the mm -hmm. royal From jelly, the glycerin. So. Yeah. yeah. And there's actually zero grams of sugar in that one and in the propolis as well. Awesome um, it's naturally know. sweet, but, but it's zero grams of sugar. So for anyone who is keto, if there are any keto listeners, those two are, are totally safe for you. Right. But the thing I love about the Belixir product is it helps you focus, stay in the zone, get your work done, but it's also really healing and detoxifying for the brain. So whether, you know, you're just a high stress person or if you're, you know, we have a lot of people who are, have been exposed to mold over a period of time and really struggle with brain fog from that. And the Belixir shots really, really help them. So yeah. it's also great to help just you know, reduce your odds of neurodegenerative conditions and help your brain age in a healthy way. So the other product that you have, which I will say, this is my personal favorite uh, because it's like too. a really great, great daily thing. You know, the other ones, I feel like, um, I think that, you know, I think it depends on the person, like in terms of brain, I, I feel like I'm pretty sharp throughout the day. So I don't, it's not like a part of my need. Of course, there are people who will probably be wanting to do it daily. You know, you don't have a sore throat on a daily basis. Um, but the, I have to say the reason why this is my favorite, because first of all, from a taste perspective, um, as much as I love honey, I always feel like honey is a little bit too sweet for me because I don't, my palate is such that I actually don't like a lot of sweetness. 
a more of a sour and, um, you know, and, and a bitter kind of a person. Mm -hmm. So this was too much. And then what you have done, which I thought was so, so smart, is putting royal jelly propolis into this mixed in and it kind of makes it into, I'm, I'm just going to try to show it. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. It becomes almost like a honey paste mm -hmm. rather than, there you go. It becomes more like a honey paste than actual honey, honey. And the, what's amazing about it is got this real um, deep sense of, um, mm, you, can, you can just taste like how <clears throat> the other two got mixed into it. <clears throat> And I went through a long hole because <coughs> I'm talking and eating. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my God. So good. So, so good. So tell us mm -hmm. about how did you come up with this idea of just mixing these other superpower herbs and uh, uh, ingredients into this, this honey? Yeah. I so not, originally I've never seen anybody do this before, by the way. Yeah. I mean, my inspiration was Manuka. So I was looking at Manuka honey and I was like, why is this honey so expensive? And so I started doing some research and I figured out that Manuka, one of the reasons that it's so sort of sought after is because it has um, higher antiviral capabilities. But then that didn't make sense to me because I know that propolis has higher antiviral capabilities than even Manuka. <coughs> so when I started looking at Manuka, I realized that, you know, the quality is dependent on, on many factors, but some of them are things like exposure to pollen and propolis. And when I saw that, I was like, forget about exposure. What if we just take our signature sustainably sourced pesticide free honey and put medicinal grade dosages of all of the superfoods from the hive right into it. So it's really special because replicating the internal environment of the hive mm. and it has medicinal, that's why a, a serving in a teaspoon, it has medicinal grade dosages. So in one teaspoon, you're getting 745 milligrams of brain boosting and hormone balancing royal jelly, 532 milligrams of bee pollen, which is full of vitamins, minerals, protein, and then 42 milligrams of propolis, which is perfect for boosting your immune system and also reducing inflammation in the body. And then it's all in our very clean pesticide tested, um, sustainably sourced raw honey base. So it's kind of an all in one. And I like to take it every morning. I use it in place of a multivitamin. Uh, mm -hmm. It's amazing for boosting energy, but it also really just helps to balance out the body. Yeah. No, it's, I, it, you know, in, I mean, you can talk a lot of, to people about a lot of different benefits, but at the end of the day, if it doesn't taste good, it's like, forget it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it tastes so, so good. Um, I just can't tell you if, yeah, it's just like, it's got this substance to it, not just like honey kind of runs and it kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. You have this, this great texture, uh, this rich pollen and the royal jelly and yes. all of the different superfoods in there. It, it really is a special taste. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, um, I want to ask you, so the links are, guys, are, are, are somewhere around this video, so, so you can just check out and get the 15% off until the 1st of November. After that, we'll just go back to regular disc, um, offer of a discount. I think it's 10% for us. So um, what I wanted to ask is, um, you know, not everybody will be, some, some of our listeners are not in, you know, in the United States, on Canada, they're somewhere else. And I also want to provide content for people who, you know, who just want to go and know how to buy really good honey when they go to farmer's market or the health food store. So can we talk a little bit about that? What are we looking for? Definitely. So it's really, I wish that I could tell you it was easy. Unfortunately, in our environment, it's challenging. It's a little, little bit better if you're outside of the United States. Um, Europe and Canada both have better measures. We actually build our products in Canada. So we're compliant with Canadian, with the uh, Health Canada. Uh, but the number one thing is look for raw. Often people, you see people thinking they're doing something healthy using honey, but it's been pasteurized. And, you know, when the honey is like very liquidy and squeezy and it, it doesn't harden over time, that means it's been pasteurized. So you really, what, what that is basically, pasteurization is the process of heating the honey to such a high degree that you're cooking out all the nutrients and it's essentially sugar water. So I mentioned honey never goes bad. You don't need to worry if your honey's like crusty or hard. That's a natural crystallization process. And so you want to make sure that your honey is raw so you're getting all of the benefits from that. The next thing you want to look out for is pesticides. And this is a hard one. If you're in the U.S., it's really tricky. If you're in Europe, Canada, it's a little bit better. But if you can go to a farmer's market and have a dialogue with a beekeeper and, and ask them, say, you know, bees forage for a up to a five-mile radius, they'll fly a pretty far distance. So if you can talk to the beekeeper and ask them, 
where are your bees placed? What are they around? Are there pesticides? Even if there's no pesticides used on your area and you're certified organic, are there pesticides used on the surrounding area? Because the truth is certified organic for bee products means nothing. Yeah, exactly. How do they even get away with that? Like, why are they even such, um, such labels? I mean, isn't it completely like misleading? It's completely misleading. A lot of quality, you know, a lot of amazing beekeepers, a lot of sort of my peers who do it sustainably, they don't even put the organic label on their products. They think it's such a joke. Yeah. So really what you want to do is, is talk to the beekeeper, have a dialogue, understand what the surrounding area looks like. Now, again, if you're in the U.S., most of the free space in the U.S. is taken up by large agricultural crops. So yeah. odds are it's, it's hard to find yeah. something really you know, clean. I, just, I had just gone to, so I live in Colorado and I, we had a, our, like a herbal event in the middle of Colorado and we went there and, you know, there was a whole bunch of honey. So I bought a whole bunch. And I was asking the farmer, like, so what's like, how do you make sure that the bees don't go to some GMO crops, right? Or they don't, you're not exposed to glyphosates. And that's what goes into the honey. And he's like, you know, it's a really good question. We don't have control. But what we do know is he said his bees, he felt like it was more like a three mile radius. Um, he said that within the three mile radius, like there is actually everybody in that area is just like, you know, a bunch of old hippies and nobody is using GMOs. And so, so it really is, um, it's also a little bit about knowing the terrain where you live, Definitely. you know, and mm -hmm. then trusting that the person who's really um, telling you that because you know the area. And it's true, like when you, you know, when you drive around that area that I was in, which I know people are gonna be asking what area, it's called Paonia in Colorado. And, you know, you can tell that there is not a single monoculture um, you know, a farmer, everybody's just doing their own little organic stuff there, you know, so mm -hmm. that give me a lot of uh, comfort. So is there anybody who is actually testing honey and then putting any kind of certification on the labels? So there's no certification, but right now we are the only bee product company that practices third party pesticide testing. Oh, really? So wow. yeah, so for all of our products, actually, and we test it in Canada again, because Canada, similar to Europe, is more rigorous. But when we get our product, when we get the raw product, we send it to our lab and we test for every pesticide, toxin, and pollutant in accordance with Health Canada. Hmm. So, and Health Canada is much more intense than the U.S., like I said. So oh, we're wow. testing for every pesticide. And in doing that, and, you know, we started doing that because of me, because I'm so reactive to pesticides, to yeah. sulfates, you name it. Like, my body reacts really negatively. So for me, I... I to stay well, I really have to move away from the pesticides. And so we started doing that for that reason. But what it's allowed us to do is make this product that's so safe, so pure, so clean, and have real impact with the bees, because we can actually put our bees in areas where there's no pesticide exposure and pesticides are one of the things that's really harming them right now. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, funny, I, I mean, I, I thought we we're gonna bring you on just to talk about your amazing products, but I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm learning something really new here too, even though I spent a lot of time in the farmer's markets and talking to people. So this, this is really awesome. Um, just let us know, is there any, um, what, what else, you know, because I think there's a lot of uh, conversations we, we have now about how bees are dying and, mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's just, you know, getting decimated, there's a whole different hypothesis why they're dying, right? Um, what can we do as consumers to, to support the whole, you know, industry to, to help bees survive? Mm -hmm. So the number one thing is spread the word. It's, we have so many issues in today's world, it's so easy to gloss over the bees, but the truth is, if we continue forgetting about the bees, we're going to have a global food crisis. The bees are the number one pollinators of our food crops. They pollinate one third of our food supply. So things like avocados, apples, almonds, even coffee is partial, partially be pollinated. And then, you know, if you go beyond all of the, the natural produce, bees are pollinating things like clover and alfalfa that cattle grazes on. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then all of the wildflowers, they pollinate that other creatures feed on. So if we lose the bees, you can think of the bees as like pillars of our environment. And if we lose them, everything will kind of crumble. So it's really important to speak up about that, have that conversation. We have a ton of information on our website. Um, we have a whole blog where we cover a whole range of subjects from sustainability to health and wellness to learning more about bee products. Um, same with our Instagram. So if you do want to learn more, please check us out there. But 
the biggest thing is I really think having a conversation and, and being sort of an activist in your own environment. Beyond that, I think it's really important to support ethical bee products. So if you are going to purchase honey, um, whether it's my company or an incredible local farmer who you meet who, you know, is doing things the right way, supporting the people in the industry who are doing it right creates more demand for others to do it right. Yeah. Right. So I want to see more sustainable beekeepers in the environment. And, yeah. and that's a big thing. Yeah. So basically we were saying stop buying the teddy bear honey. <laughs> No teddy bear honey, only the pure stuff. And then also with produce as well. And I know that, you know, organic is not perfect and it's not everyone has access to a farmer's market or high quality produce. Um, but to the extent you can, if you can purchase produce that's pesticide free, because pesticides are really harming the bees. So anytime we can support an industry that's moving away from pesticides, we're, we're voting for the bees and supporting the bees. And also if you're using pesticides on your lawn, please stop. It is so bad for the bees and it's so bad for you and your pets and yeah. your kids who are walking out there. So, you know, just getting away from pesticides is such a major thing. One other thing I'll post, um, I've actually written one Sunday, I just spent a whole day writing an article about how to talk to your HOA about changing um, the gardener because I lived in a house that was sprayed with glyphosates and they said it was only a very small amount. So this is a typical greenwashing because we don't know what safe amounts are. And to me, toxins mm -hmm. and toxins. And so, you know, and then you have these little flags all around the, the neighborhood with a, with a skull on it. It's like poison. And you're like, well, then why do you put those flags on if it's just a very small amount? Anyway, so there's an there's a, there's a article I wrote about how to talk to your HOA about that. And, and actually, my HOA changed it. Thank goodness I got out of there. I'm out here. But they just messaged me um, a couple of months ago saying, that they've changed the gardener, uh, the landscaping company. So big win on that. Um, but, you know, but we are in Colorado. There's a lot of other places that think that, that this is uh, not important. And, um, and actually, yes, especially when you talk to people about, hey, your kid's on the grass, your dog is on the mm -hmm. grass. And, you know, and all these cancers with dogs now, it's like, where is it all coming from, right? So I, I love that you did that. I just want to take a minute to recognize you for doing that because it is so important. Uh, yeah, that's just fantastic. And one other thing that people can do is plant flowers and use untreated clean seeds. The bees right. don't have access to clean food. So if we can create an environment for them, we're helping. Awesome. Fantastic. So good to have you here. I'm really so glad we connected. Me too. I thought we we're just going to be talking about honey here, but there's just so much more to it. Um, so I, I hope you keep doing what you're doing and never compromise on the quality on your product. It's going to be as amazing when we talk to you next year and a year after. Um, and uh, just give us an insight. Are you working on any new products to add to the... We, we definitely are. So what I'm passionate about just with my background and everything is revamping the medicine cabinet. Even today, the healthiest of us, we're taking probiotics and drinking green juice, but when we get sick, we're using neocitrin, and when we have allergies, we're using Benadryl. So what we're trying to do at Beekeepers Naturals is go beyond honey and work with all of these different amazing bee products and combine them with other plant-based herbal ingredients and create remedies that truly work. So we're looking to replace everything you have in your medicine cabinet, and we have a few new products coming out this year that we're really excited about. Um, so awesome. just stay tuned. Awesome. That's so curious. Can't wait to see those. Hey, Carly, great talking to you. Um, you guys, you know what to do if you're interested in getting the product. And um, I'll see you at the next great video from Hormone Balance. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording.